Yeah. Yeah. Also, look at the cover of this book. Pretty cool. We're going to be reading uh, Sigmund Freud's Interpretation of Dreams. We're skipping the intro as with last time, right? Yeah, I don't give a shit about this. Chapter yeah. 1, The Scientific Literature of Dream Problems. This is Interpretation of Dreams, right? Yeah. So we can continue this one remotely when we need to, because yeah. I own this book as well. Yeah. In the fo following pages, I shall demonstrate that there is a psychological technique which makes it possible to interpret dreams, and that on the application of this technique, every dream will reveal itself as a psychological structure full of significance, and one which may be assigned to specific place in the psychic activities of the waking state. Further, I shall endeavor to elucidate the process which the processes which underlie the strangeness and obscurity of dreams and to deduce from these process processes the nature of the psychic forces whose conflict or cooperation is responsible for our dreams this done my investigation will terminate as it will have reached the point where the problem of the dream merges into more comprehensive problems and to solve these we must have recourse to ma of material of a different kind. I shall begin by giving a short account of the views of earlier writers on this subject and of the status of the dream problem. Final solution to the dream problem? In contemporary science. Where the fuck will it terminate? As it will have reached the point where the problem of the dream merges into more comprehensive problems and to solve these, we must have recourse to material of a different kind. I shall begin by giving a short account of the views of earlier writers on this subject and of the status of the dream problem in contemporary science. I think I already read this. In the yeah, yeah, because I, I said a final solution to the dream problem. Yeah, since in the course of this treati treatise, 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 both are probably all right. I shall not often have occasion to refer to either, in spite of thousands of years of endeavor, little progress has been made in the scientific understanding of dreams. This fact has been so universally acknowledged by previous writers on the subject that it seems hardly necessary to quote individual opinions. The reader will find in many stimulating observations and plenty of interesting material relating to our subject, but little or nothing that concerns the true nature of the dream, or that solves definitely, definitely, definitively, it literally says defin definitely, definitely, whatever. Any Definitely. Def <laughs> Definitely. Oh, that's good. That's good, Corbin. That's real good. Maybe this is. Maybe I shouldn't be reading this. <laughs> maybe this is above your reading level. You need like a third grade reading level. Where the fuck did the definitely go? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, any of the of its enigmas, the ed educated it, layman. Enigmas. Ligmus, the educated layman, of course, knows even less of the matter. That is a Corbin moment, yeah. He would fucking... Dude, if Hardluck heard that... Yeah, he would lose his shit. Yeah. He'd, like, make, like, a six-hour-long video on it. Yeah. The conception of the dream that was held in prehistoric ages by primitive peoples and the influence which it may have exerted on the formation of their con conceptions of the universe and of the soul... Life, is a, the universe, and everything? It's a theme of such great interest that it is only with reluctance that I refrain from dealing with it in these pages. I will refer the reader to the well-known works of Sir John Labock, Lord Av Avebury, Avebury, Herbert Spencer, E.B. Taylor, and other writers. I will only add that we shall not realize the importance of of these problems and speculations until we have completed the task of dream interpretation that lies before us. A reminiscence... Hardluck would probably think you're a dumb farmer that isn't smart enough to comprehend his reading. I mean, he already thinks that. Yeah. But I, I saw Corbin, and he was, like, fucking milking a horse, and he's like, I'm a farmer. <laughs> I was jerking off a horse, though. So. <laughs> yeah. I was like, look, Daddy, I'm a farmer. Seriously, look how much ash I was. Yeah. I'm trying to read and do this. A reminiscence of the concept of the dream that was held in primitive times seems to underlie the evaluation of the dream, which was current among the peoples of classical antiquity. 
They took it for granted that dreams were related to the world of the supernatural beings in whom they believed. I, I think it's funny, though, that I mistook Sticks, Hex, and Hammer for Razor Fist because they look kind of alike. Yeah. But they're pretty different. Like, yeah. there's overlap, but they're pretty different. I mean, I think they both... I think they both were like Satanists, weren't they, at one point? Was Razor Fist? I don't know. Razor Fist, I thought, was... I mean, I don't know if Razor Fist was a Satanist or not. I am you a ghost. Okay. But Sticks, Sex, and Hammer literally was a Satanist. Well, yeah, and now he's an occultist. He's a pagan. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, to Christians is Satanism, so... And that they brought inspirations from... Like, like literally, the depiction of Satan as, like, a goat man is literally just combining, like, a bunch of different pagan gods into, like... Yeah. From the gods and demons. Moreover, it appeared to them that dreams must serve a special purpose in respect of the dreamer. That as a rule, they predicted the future, the extraordinary variations in the content of dream. I literally skipped the part, but fuck it. And in the impressions which they produced on the dreamer made it of... Wait, he's in a cult? He's not in a cult, he's just a pagan. ...to formulate a coherent conception of them and necessitated manifold differentiations and group formations according to their value and reliability. Because to be a cult, it has to have, like, a leader and stuff. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker. The valuation of dreams yeah, the by the gotta... individual philosophers of antiquity naturally depended on the importance which they were prepared to attribute to... Why Manticism in general. In, my fucking in the two works of Aristotle, in which there is mention of dreams, they are already regarded as constituting a problem of psychology. We are told that the dream is not God sent, that it is not of divine, but of demonic origin. For nature is really demonic, not divine. That is to say, the dream is not a supernatural revelation, but is subject to the laws of the human spirit which has, of course, a kinship with the divine. The dream, god damn it, my hair, is defined as the psychic activity of the sleeper inasmuch as he is asleep. Aristotle was acquainted with some of the characteristics of the dream life. For example, he knew that a dream converts the... Do you want to read the next page so I can actually smoke it? <laughs> I like how you ended mid-sentence. Converts the... Slight sensations perceived in sleep into intense sensations. One imagines that one is walking through fire and feels hot. If this or that of the body becomes only quite, oh, sorry, slightly warm, uh, which led him to conclude that dreams might easily betray to the physician the first in indications of an incipient physical change which has escaped observation during the day. As has been said, those writers of antiquity who preceded Aristotle did not regard the dream as a product of the dreaming psyche, but as an inspiration of div divine origin. And in ancient times, the two opposing tendencies, which we shall find throughout the ages uh, in respect to the evaluation of dream life, were already perceptible. The ancients distinguished between the true and valuable dreams, which were sent to the dreamer as warnings, or to foretell future events, and the vain, fraudulent, empty dreams whose object was to misguide him or lead him to destruction. The pre-scientific conception of the dream, which obtained among the, scien uh, among the ancients, rather, was, of course, the perfect keeping, in perfect keeping, with their general conception of the universe, which was accustomed to project as an external reality that which, that which, possessed, that which possessed reality only in the life of the psyche, Further, it is accounted for the main impression made upon the waking life by the morning memory of the, of the dream. For this memory of the dream, as compared to the rest of the psychic content, seems to be alien, coming, as it were, from another world. That's what alien means, Freud, thank you very much. <laughs> um, it would be an error to suppose that the theory of supernatural origin of dreams lacks followers even in our own times. For quite apart from pietistic and, and mystical writers who claim, oh, sorry, who cling, as they are perfectly justified in doing, to the remnants of the once predominant realm of the supernatural, until these remnants have been swept away by scientific explanation. We, we, we not infrequently find that quite in, intelligent people 
who in other respects are averse to anything of a romantic nature, go so far as to base their religious belief in the existence of cooperation of superhuman spiritual powers on the inexplicable nature of the phenomena of dreams, Hafner, the validity ascribed to the dream by a certain schools of philosophy, for example, by the school of Schelling, is a distinct reminis reminis reminiscence of the undisputed, of the undisputed. Undisputed belief, rather, <laughs> in the divinity of dreams, which prevailed in antiquity, and for some thinkers, the mantic or prophetic power of dreams is still the subject of debate. This is due to the fact that explanations attempted by psychology are too, are too inadequate to cope with the, <laughs> uh, with the accumulated material, however strongly the scientific thinker may feel that such superstitious doctrine should be repudiated. Some of the, something in there I was allergic to. My bad. To write a history of our scientific knowledge of the dream problem is extremely difficult. Because valuable, though this knowledge may be in certain respects, no real progress in a, de in a definite direction is as yet, as as yet dis discernible. No real foundation of verified results has hitherto been established on which future inve investigators might come to build. Every new author approaches the same problems afresh. Seriously, look how fast I went through this. Yeah. Because it's windy, probably. Well, also, you a smaller one than me when it comes to the cigar. Yeah. You know. Want to make but sure still, I it's like clarified that so that couldn't be I'm smoking it pretty fast. He yeah. does have a smaller one than you. Also, the cigar. Yeah, there you I go. Probably should have picked a bigger one. Oh fuck! I gotta you get rid got, of this. You still thing got too. plenty of room, Corbin. They still got plenty of. Yeah, that, you still got yeah. like 20 minutes or so. Anyway, uh, every new author approaches the same problems afresh, and from the beginning, if I if I were to enumerate such authors in chrono authors in chronological order. Giving a survey of the opinions which has held, which each has held, concerning the problems of the dream, I should be quite unable to draw a clear and complete picture of the present state of our knowledge on the subject. I have therefore preferred to base my method of treatment on themes rather than on authors, and in attempting to solution, attempting the solution of each problem of the dream, I shall cite the material of the literature of the subject. But as I have not succeeded in mastering the whole of this literature, for it is widely dispersed and interwoven with the literature of other subjects, I ask my readers to rest content with my survey as it stands, provided that no fundamental factor important point of view has been overlooked. In a supplement to a later German edition, the author adds, I shall have to justify myself for not extending my summary of the literature of dream problems to cover the period between the first appearance of this book and the publication of this second edition. This justification may not seem very satisfactory to the reader. More, uh, nonetheless, to me, it is decisive. The motives which induced me to summarize the treatment of dreams in this literature of the subject have been exhausted by the foregoing introduction. To have continued this would have cost me a great deal. So basically, he's apologizing that he didn't go into like super big depth on everything everyone else said before him. He's like, it would have taken too long. That's what he's yeah. basically saying here. Yeah. I like when he actually gets to the part where he starts interpreting dreams. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he's really fucking pretentious. Like, Freud is insanely pretentious. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> no way. Uh, to have continued this would have cost me a great deal of effort and would not have been particularly useful or instructive. For the interval in question, a period of nine years, has yielded nothing of new or valuable as regards to the conception of dreams, either in actual material or in novel points of view. In most of the literature, which has appeared since the publication of my own work, the latter has not been mentioned or discussed. It has, of course, received the least attention from the so-called research workers on dreams, who have afforded this brilliant example of aversion to learning anything new so characteristic of a scientist. Les savants ne sont pas courriers. I don't know, it's French, so whatever, good enough. Said the scoffer, and Anatoly France. This guy's last name was France and he was a Frenchman. What a frog. <laughs> That's funny. If there was such a thing in science as the right to right of revenge, I, in my t in turn, should be justified in ignoring the literature which has appeared since the publication of this book. The few reviews which have appeared in the scientific journals are so full of misconceptions and lack comprehension 
that my only possible answer to my critics would be to request that they should read this book over again, or perhaps merely they should read it. He's basically like, uh, if you're criticizing me, you didn't fucking read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty full of himself. I like it. Read yeah. the book. You well, that's, why, that's one of the things I like about Freud more than Young is that Freud's like just absolutely just fucking full of himself. Which uh, you may notice, you know, with Hard Luck, we, we're less like into that, but that's just because Hard Luck shit isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> and also because he doesn't commit. If he just committed to being an asshole like that, I'd like him more. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, I just hate that he has, like, a fake-ass persona. That's why I like that we're doing video. We're making him make videos where he's actually... Yeah. Honest. And in a supplement of the fourth German, he's added, he's, he's added yet another footnote here, uh, which appeared in 1914. Damn, this is old. Uh, a You're year old. after I published the first English translation of this work, Stephen's he Stephen's explaining the joke, like, over and over. He's like, I thought it was a clever, sophisticated joke. The joke was shitting down instead of sitting down. Yes. Far too sophisticated for us, I suppose. <laughs> I thought it was rather shallow and pedantic. Well, what if we were to give this game to say... I forget how many people. Yeah, here's some more shit he oh. added. Uh, since then, the state of affairs has certainly undergone a change. My contribution to the interpretation of dreams... Ah, he said it! He said the title! Uh, is no longer ignored in the literature of the subject. But a new situation do makes it even more impossible. Do all have his name across the front of it? Most books do that. His name. Is it his name on the front? Yes. Yeah. Most of them have the author's name. Just in Some do. Mine, mine isn't like this. Kind of, letters. This is just the way it's published. I think you're really overanalyzing this. Yeah. <laughs> but I, and I, I don't know. dumb. Okay. But the new situation makes it even more impossible to continue the foregoing summary. The interpretation of dreams has evoked a whole series of new con contentions and problems, but which have been expounded by the authors of the most varied fashions. I cannot discuss these works until I have developed the theories to which the, their authors have referred. Whatever has appeared to me as valuable in this recent literature, I have accordingly reviewed in the course of the following expositions. I can read that. Take it. Right, we're on chapter two now. Yeah. Chapter two. Valerie Flowers is the best YouTuber. I'm his biggest fan. He really entertains me with his videos. What a guy. Hilarious and original! 